So hello, Javier Trujillo, and welcome to our teacher feature interview, which is a great opportunity for our families to get to know some of the teachers they may not see very much. So thanks for taking the time. Thanks so much for the invitation. I'm always happy to share anything that I can with you guys and, you know, with all the families that we have in the program. Can you tell us about uh, the WASCA project? Yes, actually, WASCA project is an ensemble that I started in 2015, which the idea of playing guitar with other instrument because, you know, guitar is not an orchestra instrument. So I wanted to kind of like explore other different parts of the rhythmic part of the guitar and roots for music that combine academic music and music from Latin America. So the the complement that they have to each other, you know, with the cajon peruano, which is a percussion instrument, and the guitar, for me, it was just like open a totally different window of uh, different dynamics, different colors, different textures on the instrument. Even for academic music, you can just like explore different things and you can play more more with uh, different uh, times, different uh, rhythmic figures, different colors in some dynamics. So all that for me was just like a beautiful, beautiful way to relearn my own instrument. We play Latin American music and in the rhythmic part, most of it, and academic uh, music, which could be classical guitar, you know, so we can play from Bach to uh, more contemporary Latin American composers like Villalobos, for example. And this was your brainchild that you you thought of it yourself and then you invited musicians to join you? Yes, yes, there's something that I started with and it was tricky because usually, you know, the two words, they don't collide that much sometimes. Uh, you know, like when we're talking about music, academic musicians and more popular musicians. So it was a process of explaining myself and they understanding too, oh, you know, like for example, classical guitar, we really take care of our fingernails, you know, and and they did, suddenly my musician will be looking, so like, what, what are you doing there, you know, and I'm just smiling, you know, so I can create a different color. And at the same time for them to be able not to play too loud, just like quite enough so they can hear the guitar and they can complement. So it was a process to for both worlds, you know, for both musicians like that, and for me too, you know, to understand uh, the color of both instruments and how they can chat and make music. And do you consider yourself then classical? Ori like originally when you started this, would you think of yourself as classical and your colleagues were popular or your, you yeah, that, yourself both? That was a fun, interesting uh, process because I consider myself classical guitar player, but then I cannot like stop playing the standard classical guitar repertoire, uh, you know, per se. Uh, and my musicians usually are more popular musicians. I, although my bass player actually, he studied classical guitar in Mexico, but then he switched to the bass. And I think because of that too, we can really chat and he understand what I need and everything like that, you know, but, it was tricky in the first concert that we have because first of all, the academics didn't recognize us as academics music and then the popular either. So it was just like a mix of things, you know? So they would say like, but so what, 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 are, what are you trying to say there? You know, something like that. And I wasn't, it wasn't black or white, you know, it was kind of gray, the area that we want to we want to share. So in the beginning it was tricky, to be honest, for from both sides, right? from academic and the popular and from everywhere that we play, it was, it was a little, uh, like trying to understand. Luckily in the Bay Area, you know, we have so many cultures that they really open to hear these ideas, you know, they're not that radical. So uh, it was nice always to hear opinions, you know, to hear uh, why, why they were just the thoughts about the music. But I gotta say though, it was positive most of the time. And prior to COVID, were you gigging a lot? Oh, we play all the time. Yeah. Yes. What yes. do you do now? Do you do a lot of virtual things? We did in the beginning because, you know, in the beginning, everybody jumped in to play a lot of concerts and everything. But unfortunately, I think the live concert went down a little bit because everybody did and so much that it kind of burned the, the idea, you know. And, and nowadays, unfortunately, it's as easy as you're watching this and they're like, OK. And they just do that and, boom, they, <laughs> and they're gone. They can you leave. Know? 
Yeah. Yeah, they can live in a second. So we did in the beginning, uh, we play in different, people invite us, uh, some actually music stores that they want to, you know, stay stay alive. They make some concerts on their place too, and we went and played. And it was it was interesting, but I think at some point everybody was doing it in everywhere in the world, you know, at any time. So I think kind of like people got a little bit tired of it. So we, we stopped doing it now. Mm -hmm. And then how did you get into teaching? Did you always want to teach or you're a well-trained teacher and dedicated and it seems mm -hmm. you really enjoy it? That's yeah, I, I love to I love both things as, as the musician world, you know the part that you can train somebody and you can teach somebody from scratch, you know, from a little boy, little girl, and you start to teach him, you know, these are the good habits that we can have. And I really enjoy it because it was like a white paper, you know, so you can just like start, no bad technique, no, 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 something like that. Um, and the response actually that I really love is because the Suzuki method in, involved the parents. Mm -hmm. And that that is, you know, it's 50, 50 pretty much, you know, is how important is it that the mom to be there on the class and to check that the kids practice compared to, you know, you just teach a class and then you, the next week's gonna be, oh, I didn't practice. You know, but when the parents on the side, it's like, oh, you really have to have a great excuse to stay in front of your dad, oh, I didn't practice, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, so I, that is something that was an amazing backup for me. When I did my training for Suzuki teacher with Frank Longay in Santa Clara, um, he, he was the most loving big bear teacher that you can imagine, you know, like he always giving love all the time what he was teaching and, and I felt inspired because of that. Before that, I, I thought classical guitar, mm -hmm. but classical guitar, you, it's intense to, you know, you have to learn a lot of things, a lot of technique and everything. And it can be sometimes, you know, to, to tie, to uptie for some people. So to be able to do Suzuki since they're kids, so it's like, you know, well, let's play with Twinkle and things like that. It was just like, wow, I really enjoy it. And that's why I really love to teach. And at the same time, I love to play, you know, because then I can share my experiences when it happens on the stage, you know, it's always different. Right. And, uh, for me, it's important uh, to share both sides of the musician, you know, the, the traditional that you can teach and the other one that you're still a musician and you need to play. Mm -hmm. How did you get into Suzuki specifically? Well, I have friends that, uh, you know, I'm from Peru. So in Peru, they already uh, were mentioning this about the Suzuki program that happened there. Um, but I, I never actually uh, get into teaching Suzuki there. When I came here and I saw that there was a program of Frank Longay in Santa Clara, then I got interested. And then when I chat with him, he was just like, welcome anytime. So like, yes, come here, you know, yes, you can do that. And, and I went to check a couple lessons and I love it. I really like the dynamic and all the toys that he has, you know, how he play with the kids and then he went back to the guitar and play and this and that. So uh, because of that, I feel inspired. And I immediately sent out with him to say, okay, please teach me, <laughs> train me. So uh, it was really nice. And do you incorporate popular music and music of other cultures, like what you work on? yourself yes when, when the when i see that the foundation is really strong then i start to go with like the american rhythms because sight reading is tricky and you know and then besides sight reading the swing you know how it's supposed to flow the, the music is more tricky so all the part that in latin america is considered the oral tradition that you learn by looking and some or you know parents teach you the parents told you, told you like that um, you know, like Villalobos, for example, he brought music that is rich in Brazilian rhythms, but with academic uh, foundation. So that thing I love to introduce in, in the music. When I started studying uh, with, uh, with Fran Longay in Santa Clara, Suzuki, there wasn't Latin American composers in the book yet. Mm. So I, well, I was telling him like, which one do this? You know, like this him. And he, he was always listening. He was always like, yes, 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 we can. We can totally do that, and I, uh, I see that now there are classical composers there and everything, and and they, they move really into that. So I'm I really happy with how the program they move. You know, they're always listening, they're always checking, while what, working what improve more these and improve that. So it's nice. I don't think I've ever seen classical guitar 
notation. I've only seen chord charts, which are used for popular music, right? Mm -hmm. So is guitar music written out the same way piano music or cello music is? Yeah, you know, in treble clef. But the only thing is that, um, you know, like in a piano, for example, you have your middle C and that C is that C, that's it. Uh, like in another a string instrument, the guitar is like you have the open E, the E here, the E on the third string, the E on the fourth string, and things like that, you know? So that could be one of the tricky parts to say reading classical guitar, because some composers actually, they never put any notes or any notes like, this should be in this string, this should be in this note. Some of them, like Villalobos, for example, Brazilian composer, his chords are, you know, from Brazilian music. So they are beautiful, but to play them, you try to do it in the first position and your hand is like, oh, and then it's all that is all the way here, you know, on the 12th fret or 11th fret. So to read that quick, it's, it's, it's really tricky. Right. It's really tricky at the beginning. Yeah. And like cello, it seems that guitar, electric guitar is really popular, especially with teenagers, but classical guitar is not as popular as like violin or piano. So what are yeah. your thoughts on why it's not as popular an instrument? It's crazy, you know, it's so true that. Um, classical guitar, it's, it's a beautiful instrument and everything. And to some degree, you know, I'm always talking to different teachers and, and we came to the conclusion that it's like an elite instrument. I don't know how, I don't know why, to be honest, because guitar adapts to any culture nowadays and you can play guitar in any style of music, you know, any type of music. But somehow the classical guitar is like box in this tiny world, you know, with you have to file your nail, you have to have this tiny box in here and things like that, you know. So it's it's quite uh, amusing because when I go to festivals, uh, back in the days I used to work for a classical guitar store here in San Francisco, and sometimes they send me there to check new scores that we have to order. And it was like pretty much you don't talk to the guitar player, you know? You just look to the guitar player. <laughs> you, you size the other guitar player, you know? And then for it, okay, oh yeah, then somehow you can you can chat, you know? But it's, there's this, I don't know why. I honestly never really took the time to, to go to the root of why this is. But yes, it's not that popular. It's not that many concerts, you know? I think that you can go and check People are not familiar with the concept of classical guitar. You know, when they, they, they can say flamenco, for example, oh, flamenco music, you know, and they flamenco for them is equal fast. Mm. So you have to play really fast. So that flamenco, which, you know, actually it is not true. But no, I don't know why the classical guitar is not that popular. And actually that's what I tried to do to mixing my music in Wasco Project, you know. To say like, listen, I'm playing Bach with a cajon player here and it's totally doable. And I bet Bach will have a blast. <laughs> he was here too, because you know, he, he always was looking into different styles of music too. So for me, it's a side, yeah. Well, so what do you like to do for fun and to relax? I love to eat. <laughs> you like I love to cook? <laughs> I love to cook. I love to cook and I love to eat. You know, I always mix that. I think is. Is the two words collide to especially performing, you know, because when you play in different places and people say like, oh, we have the chef is going to make something for you guys. And we're like, oh, yes, you know, <laughs> totally. So I, I love to, I love to try food from different parts. You know, I'm Peruvians are super proud of the food. You know, we, we're really proud of our culture. And because of that, it's kind of open uh, different uh times to relax and say like, ah, oh, today I want to try to do this, you know, and I make it and I make it for my boy, do it for my fiance, you know, and for my family. So we we share the moment and I, I, that's something that I really enjoy as much as playing could be, yeah, because, you know, it's, it's sharing. It's a nice moment of sharing. Sharing is caring. Could you listen to music while you're cooking? Oh, yeah, of course. Have to. <laughs> have to. <laughs> it and, blends it. Yeah. Do you cook like all kinds of ethnic types of food? Different no, I, I haven't gone into Indian too much because I know there are so many spices that I'm not familiar yet. So that's something that I still have to look into. Mm -hmm. But in general, yes, you know, I, I love to check different cultures and see what they're doing and then how you compare it, you know, like 
good wine, you know, or maybe an IPA or something that I love all those uh, experience uh, with the family things. So I'm curious then for the holidays, will you be the one who's doing the cooking? Oh, well, uh, my mom is here too. So in that department, I, she's the boss. <laughs> <laughs> Do you help her in the kitchen? Um, no, you know, this is a thing in, in, in my country. I think it, it is once the mom or the grandma usually is this, the one that's that, doing that, you cannot go in. You know, it's like prohibited kitchen. land. No, no, no. The only land you can help, but the, no, this is, that's the ground. You, you don't want to go there because right. you do something wrong. Oh, you're going to get it. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you and, and have great holidays. Thanks so much. Happy holidays to you too.